Okay, for this one, we want to calculate the redshift. And we have our two reference lines set up. So we did that from our earlier question. And we have our values here. So we have the reference uh, spectra here, value here, and then we have the actual star spectra value here. You may have chose a different spectral line, and that's okay. It should turn out very similar. Uh, your, your results should, should, should turn out the same because they've all shifted over the same amount. Um, but let's take these two. So uh, we got our, let's put this, plug these in. So the star's value, uh, star's wavelength is 657.90. So I'm going to go over here. And the star, star is going to be this upside down Y, which is a Greek letter lambda. And I already forgot what the number was. So I'm going to go back. It's 657.90. So 657.90 is for the star. So this is the observed wavelength that the star actually has. All right, and then this other variable is the, the lambda reference, so that's the reference spectra. And for this one, we have 656.30. So let's put that there 656.30. We got our variables. Here's the equation this is the redshift equation z equals lambda observed over lambda reference minus one. So let's take these values and plug them into the equation. So let's see, we got that's our lambda observed. We know that goes in the top here. Um, so let's put that in the top. And then there's lambda reference. This goes in the bottom. Let's take that, put that in the bottom. And now we have our equation ready. We just simply have to do a little bit of algebra. And by doing our um, order of operations, PEMDAS, uh, we don't have any parentheses. We don't have any exponents. We get to M. We don't have any multiplication. We get to D. We do have division. So we want to do division first, and then after that would come the subtraction. So let's get our calculator going here. Uh, let's see here. Calculator. Okay, so we'll do 657, 7.90 divided by 656.3, and then we put equals. That's going to give us that value. That's what we would have for this middle part. Want to make sure you put that equals because we're doing that first and then we'll subtract one from it and that's the subtraction part and then we come up with our answer uh, so here's our answer and okay so let's put the let's put this down here z equals and we'll put that in there and we'll make it a little bit smaller um, but uh, this is going to be our answer here and it's a positive value it's very small um, but that's, that's that's okay it's not usually going to be very big the bigger it is the bigger the shift um, and it's hard to shift because the speed of light is extremely fast so this is shifting very fast even though it's a small number and since it's positive that tells us it's red shifted if it were negative it would be blue shifted so uh, but that tells us if you look at the equation here the observed uh, wavelength in in uh, comparison to the reference wavelength uh, and then you take away one so if the observed wavelength is bigger than the reference wavelength you'll have a little bit more than a value of one so you'll be left over with a little bit okay. so that tells us the wavelengths of the star are being stretched out they're longer than they should be um, so that tells us it's moving away it's stretching out those wavelengths if it was the other way around, if this observed wavelengths of the star were smaller than the uh, observed reference, what they should be, then you'd come up with a fraction here. When you subtracted one, you would end up with a negative value, and that would tell you that your wavelengths on the top are shorter than they should be, and that would happen because you're blue shifting, you're moving toward it, toward the, the observer. Okay, So that's how that equation works.